fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Rod Morgan was a big man and a tough one. He took great pleasure in terrorizing the territory with his gang, and his methods were unexpected and unusual for an outlaw. Men still talked of the time Rod and his men rode openly into the town of Monroe and stopped at the sheriff's office. All right, follow me. All right, reach here for coming in. Rod Morgan. That's right. I heard you were looking for me and my men. So we came here to save you the trouble. Now, see here, Morgan. Shut up. Now, take your gun. Now, stand up. You won't get away with this. Yeah, we'll get away with it, all right. After we leave here, we're going to hold up the cafe. But before we leave, I'll give you this. Yeah, that's that. Now, men, we'll go over to the cafe and clean it out. Come on. All right, all right. Another bold move made by Rod Morgan was also the topic of conversation in the various cafes. The time when he and his gang rode up to a group of Bar 3 ranch hands who were busy branding horses. Hey, what do they want? We got you all covered, so don't try to get funny. Get their guns, men. Now look here, what's the idea anyhow? Let me introduce myself. I'm Rod Morgan. I see you're branding those horses with a Bar 3 brand. I need about 20 head to sell across the border. But my brand is the Bar 8. Here's a brand on iron. Just change the brands of the Bar 8 on 20 of those horses and make it fast. Now get to work. Mark my words, Morgan. We'll get the rest of the ranch hands and trail you before you can reach the border. <laughs> nope, I don't think you will. After you get those brands changed, we'll tie all of you and take your guns and horses with us. It's morning now. By the time someone comes to see where you are, we'll be a long way from here. Now, get busy. And Rod Morgan's most recent escapade took place in the bank at Stockton. Rod, appearing as a prosperous rancher, was ushered into the bank owner's office. A gentleman to see you, sir. Well, you come right in, mister, and sit down. Well, thanks. I'll get right to the point. I come to borrow $10,000. $10,000? Of course, of course. But you'd have to put up sufficient collateral for such an amount, you understand. Oh, sure, yeah. I have a note already made out. 
Yeah, it is. Hmm. I, the undersigned, promise to pay to the Stockton Bank $10,000 in 60 days, with interest at 6%. Rod Morgan. Rod Morgan? Hold on, isn't he? Yeah, I'm Rod Morgan, mister. My men are draped around your bank outside, sort of nonchalant-like, just waiting. I suggest you get to the vault and get the money in exchange for that note. I'll mosey along with you, holding this gun so it won't be noticed. But see here, I'll I get can't... the money and leave the note. That's fair and square. <coughs> now, let's get to the vault. I don't aim to wait long. And if I don't? My men will clean out the place and we'll lock you and your clerks in a vault. And maybe a couple of you will wear a bullet hole or two. Now, do I get that loan or not? Well, I... Uh, yes. Yes, of course. Come with me. A few days later, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, stopped to make camp in the hills a short distance from Stockton. This is a good spot for a temporary camp, Tonto. Ah. Uh, you think maybe outlaw Rod Morgan have hideout near Stockton, Kimisabi? Well, that's what I'm hoping. We stay around here for a day or two anyway. According to what you heard in the cafe at Milton yesterday, Morgan held up the bank in Stockton just a few days ago. Isn't that right? Men say him leave note. That doesn't mean anything, of course. It was his way of getting to the bank owner and throwing him off guard. Rod Morgan always does things in unusual ways. Uh, that's what everyone say. How do you think we get line on Morgan, Kimasabi? I've been thinking of a way, Tonto. I'm not sure it will bring him out of hiding, but it's worth trying. Uh, what's your plan do? I decided that if Rod Morgan heard that a wealthy tenderfoot from the east were coming to Stockton, a man who carried plenty of cash with him, then Morgan might be interested. Oh, that's right. I'll be that tenderfoot, Tonto. You can help me fix a disguise, and at noon I'll board the stage in Stockton and ride to Milton. Then what happened? I'll uh, leave Silver here in camp with you. When I reach Milton, I'll get some eastern clothes. Meantime, you go to Stockton and find out all you can. But uh, how Morgan know about Tenderfoot? Tonight from Milton, I'll have the sheriff send a telegram to the sheriff in Stockton, telling of a Tenderfoot cattle buyer who insists upon carrying a lot of cash and suggesting that the sheriff keep an eye on him for his protection. But how Morgan hear about it? Both sheriffs will be wise to the plan. The one in Stockton will see to it that word gets out about it. Oh. Then what you do? Next, I'll take the stage from Milton to Stockton. And I'm hoping that Rod and Morgan will try to hold up that stage. But you not try to stop Morgan and gang alone, Kimasabi. No. The plan is to have two deputies on the boot instead of the regular driver and guard. The sheriff and his men from Milton will trail the stage. Oh. I'm savvy. Tomorrow, the sheriff of Stockton and his men... We'll ride out along the trail to meet the stage. I suggest you ride with him and bring Silver. Me do it. Now, come on and help me fix that disguise. Then I'll wait on the trail out there for the stage to come along. After that, you can ride to town. For some time, the Lone Ranger and Tonto worked on a disguise until finally they were both satisfied with the result. Uh, uh, uh. Ah, now you look like real tenderfoot from East, Kimasabi. Good. It's almost time for the stage for Milton. We'll ride out to the trail, then you can bring Silver back here. All right, let's get going. <laughs> easy, big fella. Easy, scout, easy, fella. One Silver, get him up, scout. After the Lone Ranger had left on the stage, Tonto took Silver back to the camp. The Indian spent most of the afternoon resting. Then that evening, he rode to Stockton and entered the cafe. He lounged at the back of the cafe, watching and listening. Finally, the sheriff and one of his deputies entered. Hi, Sheriff. Get a line on Morgan's gang yet? No. That Morgan is a plenty smart hombre, seems like. Sure is. Hope he don't get wind of that tenderfoot cattle buyer who's coming to town on the stage tomorrow. So do I. I got word to sort of keep an eye on that tenderfoot. Seems like he carries a lot of cash around with him. Might serve him right if someone like Morgan did teach him a lesson. Of course, it's up to me to see that he don't. How did you hear about the tenderfoot, Sheriff? Well, I got a telegram from the Sheriff at Milton a while ago. 
Guess he's mighty glad to get rid of that tenderfoot before he gets robbed or something. <laughs> well, we'll have better refreshment, then we'll get back to the office, Ben. Right, Sheriff. A short time later, the sheriff and his deputy went to their office. A few minutes later, Tonto entered. Me come talk about plans for Tenderfoot. Yeah, I've been expecting you, Indian. Guess you're the one who's supposed to ride with us. That's right. Well, our friend is all set to board the stage from Milton in the morning. If Rod Morgan had anyone planted in the cafe, he'll hear about the Tenderfoot with all the cash. <laughs> and if he does hear about it and falls for the plan, It'll mean the end of him and his gang. <laughs> yeah, he'll sure get a big surprise. Well, me hope him hear about plan, but him plenty smart. Maybe him not get fooled so easy. He won't have any reason to suspect anything. <laughs> That's a mighty clever idea your friend had, and I'm inclined to think it'll work. There isn't much Morgan doesn't hear about, and if, if he's anywhere around, he'll get the news and want to get the Tenderfoot's cash. That's when we grab him and his whole gang. Later that night, one of Morgan's men reined to a stop before a shack hidden in the forest. Hold, hold that, hold that. Steady, boy. Well, here's Tom back in stock. Anything doing in town, Tom? Hey, you come back early, Tom. You look like you brought some news. Yeah, I have, Rod. Nobody got wise to you, did they? You know better than that, Les. I'm plenty careful. Yeah, Tom knows his way around. He's careful. Let me do the talking. To find out what Tom heard. <laughs> it just is, Rod. There's a tenderfoot cattle buyer coming to Stockton on the stage tomorrow. How do you know? Heard the sheriff tell about it. Lisa's deputy spilled the news in the cafe. What's a tenderfoot cattle buyer got to do with us? He's a loke hombre who carries a lot of cash with him. The law in Milton telegraphed the sheriff to sort of keep an eye on him while he's in Stockton so he won't get robbed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they must figure we're still in the territory. Yeah, I guess that's about it. Are you figuring on relieving that hombre of his cash, Rod? Yeah, why not? We could sure use it. <laughs> but with the sheriff watching him, it won't be easy. That's right. This sheriff isn't like the one down in Monroe, the one we just walked in on. The sheriff in Stockton keeps plenty of deputies around all the time. I know that. We'll just have to figure out a way to get to that tenderfoot, that's all. Anyone got any ideas? We could hold up the stage. I don't be loco. Straight hold up wouldn't do. Why not? Because if they're so worried about that hombre and his cash, more than likely they'll put a couple of deputies on that stage. That's why. Yeah, that's right. But after he gets in town, it won't be easy, Rod. I know that. Have you got any ideas then? Well, maybe I have at that. What plan do you have? Yeah, tell us what you're thinking about. Well, it's just this. If I, for instance, was riding inside the coach, sitting right beside that tenderfoot, uh, maybe a hold-up would work out. Oh, work you know, that face of yours is too well known. Sure. The minute you went to get on, they'd know you. That's All right, right, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not fool enough to just go to Milton and try to board a stage like I am. What do you mean, like you are? I mean, if I was to shave my beard and wear Eastern clothes and then go to Milton. Hey. You mean sort of disguise yourself, huh? Yeah, that's a gentle idea, Tom. Hey, that might really work at that. You could fix up enough to fool him, Rod. I reckon even I wouldn't know you without that beard and another clothes. All right, then it's all settled. I'll get to work right now changing my looks by shaving my beard. Then I'll get other clothes and even change my voice using a drawl. Sort of like this. I reckon you're out here on a business trip, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how's that? Quiet, huh? Rod. That'll do yeah, it. Good. I'll get to Milton and time to board the stage. You men wait at the place a few miles from here where the trail fords a creek. When you start riding in and shooting, I'll draw and get the drop on that tenderfoot. I'll threaten to kill him if the men on the boot resist the holdup. <laughs> oh, that tenderfoot is sure in for a big surprise. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. The Lone Ranger planned to ride the stage disguised as a tenderfoot so as to trap Rod Morgan and his gang. But he didn't have any idea that Rod Morgan also planned to ride the stage in disguise so that his gang would have a chance to hold up the stage. Rod finished his disguise. Well, men, how do I look without my beard, eh? With these city clothes. <laughs> I never know you, Rod. You've got to stop squirming around those tight-fitting clothes, Rod. You better act like you're used to them. Yeah. Oh, no. I'll gradually get used to them. And that time, we'll go get our horses and ride to the outskirts of Milton. You can bring my horse back. I'll go to the hotel and wait till the stage leaves in the morning. All right. Uh, don't forget to use your draw, though, Rod. Somebody might recognize your voice. Plenty of people have heard it. Yeah, that's right. You all have nothing to worry about, my friends. <laughs> My name is now Hank Hawkins, and I'm from good old New Orleans. <laughs> yes, sir, I reckon I'll buy up a small ranch out here and settle down, respect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how's that, huh? Well, you all said, Rod. <laughs> yeah, let's get started for Milton. Won't take long to get there if we ride hard. Huh? Yeah, come on, then, let's go. See you all later, fellas. Right. The following morning, an hour before stage time, the sheriff of Milton visited the Lone Ranger in his hotel room. Come in, Sheriff Newton. Thanks, mister. Well, you, you sure look the part of a tenderfoot, all right. <laughs> I notice you were registered as Mr. David Banks from Boston. Yes, that's right. Well, the uh, trouble is that voice will give you away. Them folks from Boston got a certain way of talking. Oh, yes, I know, sir, I know. I'm what? quite sure how I managed to get by, sir. <laughs> quite sure. <laughs> By thunder, that's got it. Yes, sir, that's more like it. Well, the stage will be leaving right soon. Me and my men will follow it to Stockton, keeping far enough behind, of course, so no one will get suspicious. Good. I hope we get results. Well, good luck, mister. Thanks. I'll get along now. I'll be seeing you in Stockton, one way or another. So long. Adios. As Sheriff Newton left the Lone Ranger's hotel room and went through the lobby, he didn't notice the man in city clothes who watched him furtively from behind a newspaper. Everything all right, Sheriff Newton? Yeah, I reckon it is, Fred. Hope the stage is on time. It will be, I guess. See you later, Sheriff. Yep. As the sheriff went out, the city-dressed man put down the paper and, getting up, crossed over to the clerk at the desk. Something for you, Mr. Hawkins? Does the sheriff live here at the hotel, sir? No, he was just here to see somebody who's going to leave on the stage. Oh, so that's it. You mean the sheriff is going to ride the stage with a friend of his, is that it? <laughs> You're wrong again, Mr. Hawkins. It's just the man he came to see who's going to ride the stage. The sheriff isn't going along. <laughs> Oh, leave it to us city fellas to get everything wrong out here. I've heard a lot about these here western sheriffs. I was sort of hoping that he'd be on the stage that I'm waiting for. Well, I reckon I'll meet up with some more sheriffs, though, before I head back east. <laughs> Just so you're meeting him friendly like, Mr. Hawkins, it'll be all right. But I guess a tenderfoot like you wouldn't have cause to worry about the law out here. <laughs> yeah, of course not, of course not. Well, thank you for the information, sir. Let me know when the stage pulls up outside. Yes, sir, I sure will. When the stage finally stopped in front of the hotel, the Lone Ranger, looking every inch the tenderfoot, was waiting to get on. He noticed the two deputies on the boot of the stage and knew that all arrangements were in order. Oh, oh there! Oh, there! Oh, you... Oh, there! Oh! Get aboard, anyone that's going west. Uh, Mr. Banks, I guess you better get into the coach. Hope you have an easy trip to Stockton. It ain't far, you know. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You've been most kind. Uh, wait, wait just a minute. Looks like you're going to have company. Oh? There's an armory coming from the hotel to get the stage, looks like. Yes. He seems to be from the east. Howdy, mister. You taking the stage? Well, I reckon I am, Sheriff. Oh, it seemed like I saw you around town before. Well, that's right, sir. You haven't. My name's Hank Hawkins. I come from New Orleans. Got off the train over to Rockville, hired a horse to get over here during the night so as to catch the stage. I see. Well, glad to know you, Mr. Hawkins. Oh, uh, meet Mr. Banks from Boston. You'll be riding the coach together as far as Stockton. Well, I'm mighty glad to make your acquaintance, Mr. Banks. It's a pleasure, Mr. Hawkins. Indeed, a pleasure. 
Uh, shall we climb aboard, sir? Might as well, I reckon. After you, sir. After you. <laughs> well, you folks from up Boston way sure are mighty polite, Mr. Banks. <laughs> Come on aboard. I certainly hope the ride won't be too rough. Well, I don't favor too much rough riding myself. I reckon you came west on business, sir. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Great country out here. Reckon I might settle out here myself if I could find a ranch to buy. Oh, I see. You've come west to stay, then? Well, that depends. All set back there. Let her go, driver. Get up. Get up there. Come on. Come on. As the stagecoach moved along the rough trail toward Stockton, Rod continued to be talkative to the man he considered a tenderfoot. Rod took delight in playing a cat-and-mouse game with his intended victim, and he felt secure in the belief that his stage companion took him at face value. In a subtle way, the Lone Ranger urged Rod on in his conversation. I reckon an hombre like you would take a long time to get used to this sort of country, huh, Mr. Banks? Oh, perhaps so, sir. Perhaps so. Uh, do you think you'd like it out here, Mr. Hawkins? Yes, I reckon I would. Just a matter of getting used to the place. But I have the impression that you're a city man. Well, that's right, sir, I am. Lots of folks who came out here were from the city. They got along fine. Well, oh, that's true, very true. But I understand they have outlaws and the like out here. <laughs> well, Mr. No Owlhood is going to scare me away. No, sir. <laughs> I'm big enough to take care of myself. You know how to handle a gun, then? Yes, I reckon I do at that. Enough to keep any sneaking coyotes from bothering me too much. Oh, I see. You came out on the train yesterday to Rockville, did you say, sir? Yep, that's right. Rode over to Milton on a hired horse to catch this stage. For a few minutes, they rode in silence. But the Lone Ranger was eyeing Rod Morgan carefully from under lowered lids. Several facts had made him suspicious of the big stranger. His easy use of words peculiar to the far west, such as ombre, owl hoot, and coyote. Also, the Lone Ranger knew that there wasn't a train from the east that had stopped at Rockville the day before. Get along there! Get going! As he scrutinized Rod, the Lone Ranger noticed several things that belied the stranger's claim to being a city man. Certain calluses on one hand were indicative of long and continued use of brains. Moreover, as Rod had walked to the stage, the Lone Ranger had noticed the rolling gait, peculiar to a man used to living in a saddle. The way Rod tugged at his collar and shifted his position every few minutes told the masked man that his companion was definitely not used to the clothes he wore. The Lone Ranger finally spoke. You say you spent most of your life in the city, sir? Yep, yeah, born and raised in New Orleans. I see. Oh, I wonder how much farther it is to Stockton. Do you know? Well, not far now. As soon as we cross a creek about half a mile ahead, we'll be just about there. Well, that's good news. I'm surprised you know so much about it, Mr. Hawkins. What do you mean, sir? Well, since you're not supposed to be familiar with this country, it struck me as rather strange that you'd know about the creek and Stockton. Oh, oh, that. Well, you see, I heard some hombres talking in a hotel. That they... All right, this is it. Now. Oh, you don't move. What's the idea of the gun? You talk different, too. So have you, Rod Morgan. I'll take the gun you have hidden under your vest. Now, wait a minute. I don't get this. You will. Your acting and your language weren't consistent with your disguise. A close look convinced me you were Rod Morgan without your beard. Whoa! Oh, hold there! Whoa! Oh, hold there! Your men are riding up. Lean out and tell them to drop their guns, or I'll put a bullet in you. Oh, 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 look here. You and I told you. Hey, Tom! Yeah. Hey! Yeah. This sneaking hombre in here has got the drop on me. You drill me if you don't throw down your guns. Take care of yourself. We ain't giving up. Drop those guns and take the consequences. This will show you, mister. Oh! oh. Hey, look. A posse coming from Tall Town. Well, let's beat it quick. Hey, don't leave me. Shut up, you. Hey, there's more coming from the other way. We're trapped. Keep shooting, man. Yeah, man. Let's go. You aren't going to keep me here like this. Better grab my gun, huh? Get out there, you. All right, get to your feet. Why, you sneaking sidewinder out. Hey, look. Take it. A couple of tenderfeet fighting. That tall one sure carries a wallop. This will settle you, Morgan. 
All right, get up. No, no, I have enough. Hey, look at that. The tenor foot beat up, Rod. I can hardly believe it. Something must have gone wrong. It looked like plan worked out all right, Kimosabi. Yes. Strangely enough, Rod Morgan had the same idea I had. To disguise himself and ride the stage. Yeah. You mean you aren't a tenderfoot? What do you think, Morgan? Holy cow, is that really Rod Morgan? That's right, Sheriff. He is Morgan, without his beard. And to think I put him right on the stage with you. That's all right, Sheriff Newton. Everything turned out for the best. Morgan wasn't as observing as I was, nor was he as careful. He slipped up too many times. Uh, me bring Silver. Him over there with Scout. Good. Let's go back to camp now, Toto. Uh, adios. So adios. Adios. Uh, anybody hurt, Sheriff? Well, one of them outlaws got clipped by a bullet, and the deputy who was driving got wounded. We'll get him to Stockton along with the others. Who was that hombre, Sheriff? Is he the tenderfoot you were expecting? He sure didn't act like a tenderfoot. Well, he certainly fooled Rod Morgan into thinking he was. I guess Morgan isn't as good at acting as the mask man. Mask man? Yeah. What mask man? Hey, uh, you're all loco. No. <laughs> you're the only loco one around here, Rod Morgan. So loco, you thought you could pull another smart trick <laughs> and fool the one hombre in the West that can't be fooled. <laughs> yes, you see, that so-called tenderfoot was none other than the Lone Ranger. Well, that's Lone right, Ranger. Morgan. <laughs> This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.